Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. All right, here's the phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Sunday, we have Fred Schneider. You know him from the B-52s, and he's doing some solo stuff. So he's going to come visit Ann and I in uh, Arlington. We'll, we'll be broadcasting from the Westwood One facility there. And I'll be stuck out here. Yes, Drew. Looking at Mike. That's all I'll have to Mike to the do. engineer, yeah. yes. Legs akimbo on the desk, enjoying yourself with the freedom. Come on, you guys are just going to have had your private tour of the White House. Oh, that's right. right. Yes, Ann and I, Ann has arranged a private tour of the White that's House. That's true. Can you believe that? For Sunday. Is that ridiculous? <laughs> it's yeah, ridiculous. Welcome to the White House. <laughs> yes, and uh, I hear, I don't know who's in now, Ford or whoever. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't really keep up. But the point is, is uh, whoever it is is gone. So we get to go through the o- Oval Office. I'm going to use the, um, I'm, I'm going to see if I can't, like, make, uh, make number two in the White House. <laughs> I mean, it's been a, it's been a goal of mine for a lot of years. So I'm going to, I am really proud of you. Oh, yes. The, uh, lovely HFS festival will be out there in Washington at lovely RFK Stadium, and I will be there greeting my minions. Mm. But tonight, we thought we had no guest. Oh, also, uh, let me let me mention it later on next week. Adam West. Oh, really? Which, uh, should oh, really? Be, That'll be interesting. Should be fodder for the show and yeah. uh, the Deftones. But tonight, we thought we were flying solo until a little Cessna Piper Cub slid into the studio by the name of Kennedy, MTV's Kennedy. She's such a breath of fresh air. Hi, Adam. Hi, Kennedy. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Who won the game tonight? Uh, it tied everything. What? Right? What? No, oh, we tied Utah the series won? up? Yeah, I think Utah was winning. Can you believe it? All right, but this is not a sports show. Hi, Drew. Kennedy, Kennedy how are you? You came here with nothing to hawk. No. Nothing I, to I pedal. Nothing, no. I pedal nothing. You came in. You're in town. Yes. When did you get in? I've been here for about two weeks doing the MTV Beach House. And I didn't get a call. Oh. You Hi. promised you'd call. I she just will came call here. You. She came here to see you, Adam. No, she came here to see you, Drew. You two were locked up in some conference room uh, talking about um, breast. What are you going to, augmentation or breast cancer? No, breast augmentation. I want to get double Ds put in so I can uh, go on the circuit. I'll tell you, you could have Kennedy me. Kennedy Canyons. Woo! <laughs> now, still a virgin? Oh, you Tired of that stuff? Son of a... Why is it important? But you, you blow like the wind, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Bob Dylan. How are you? Uh, all right, Kennedy. So uh, we'll get into some beach house garb. Do Wait, you you're... still take it anally from a woman wearing a strap on? Absolutely. Did you bring it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna we're gonna go to the phones, then we'll talk a little about MTV okay. and all that good stuff. Mike, twenty three, you're on Love Line with MTV's Kennedy. Hey, how you doing? Good. Okay, um, I have a question here for well, all all of you guys actually, and maybe Kennedy could probably be the best one to answer it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can tell if my girlfriend is actually having an orgasm. <laughs> a meat thermometer. <laughs> Find her on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know. She's probably faking it, if you have to ask. Okay. Mike, why don't you believe her? Well, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like it happens too easily. Oh, well, that's good. Maybe she's very... But you don't question that. I mean, we, we've talked about this on the show a few times. Kennedy ever... Well, wait a minute. You know... Yeah, you you could you could fake one once in a while. It's you? easy to fake one. If you're a woman, it's very easy to fake an orgasm. All right. Well, now that you've led yourself into this uh, little trap of mine, why don't you go it's, ahead? Uh, well, what? Make Ryan prove that, and when he no, just telling. give me a little. Just if, like, let's say I was over at your place, and we weren't. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. The guards would have you <laughs> shot immediately. All right. Let's just say we're out in the parking lot in my van, and there's no actual <laughs> no actual penetration, but I was I was pleasuring you. You're as only, fondling me. As only I can pleasure a woman. Now. Give me a little bit. Let's just say. No, no. <laughs> B- baby, come on, get off the captain's chair and onto the shack. Yep, Was that it? Yeah. All right, Mike. Here's the deal. And Kennedy, you, let's argue over this because I believe it's okay let's for argue, a woman. Adam. No, well, if you disagree. Okay. I think it's a good thing for a woman to fake it. Why is I it think a good it's thing a, for a woman to fake it? It's a gesture. 
It's yeah, a flattering exactly. gesture. Well, it's like when you go into someone's house and you say, wow, what a beautiful home you got. Because you're not going to redecorate the place for them right then and there. Right. You're not laying any tile. Exactly. You're only there for a little uh, little finger food and maybe some uh, warmed over Bosco. And you're going to be <laughs> out of there in a half hour. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So might as well make nice. Mm -hmm. And she wants to get out of there probably a little faster than that, Mike. And that's what's going on. I, I liken it to when you're a kid and and your dad got into the Santa outfit. And he went down, and you sp spotted him from the top of the stairs. Now, he was impersonating Santa. Yeah. There's no Santa. He mm -hmm. was trying to fool you. He was pulling you a fast one. You impersonate Santa every night, though. Maybe that, oh, that's that true. Is, uh... <laughs> all <laughs> right. I never thought about the every night argument. Only on Christmas. All right. Yeah, so, exactly. Once all right. a year. Once a year. Uh... But women do have contractions that, that can be noticed, if people know what they're looking for. Yeah. yeah. All right. Exactly. That's very true. And if you know your partner well, then uh, A, she shouldn't have to fake it, and B, you should know when she's having it. And and if you're Jewish, you can fake it eight times a year. little Hanukkah humor That's there. That's funny. Tori, dreidel, 21. Dreidel, dreidel, I made it out of play. Okay, we got Ethel Merman in studio. <laughs> Tori, you're on Loveline, 21. Hi. Hey. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Tori. Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with bifurcated nipples. <laughs> bifurcated? Um, where there's like three. Okay. <clears throat> oh, my um, gosh. Priscilla Barnes had that in Mall Rats. My my boyfriend has that, uh -huh. and um, it's always been normal for him to like have like a clear liquid come out of him. But um, like recently, he's had more than usual. How old is he? He is eighteen. Is he on any medications? No, he's not. Okay. Um, well, where's the third one? No, it's not. It's not three nipples. It's like it's he's got regular two normal nipples, but it's like instead of having just one bump, he has three. Like the actual nipple part, he has like. Three holes instead of one. Mm hmm. Um, Drew, I just belched up something again. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. I already had noticed. I had, I had already noticed that you walked in with quite a lovely odor. Mm hmm. Do they have boar's head on the West Coast? No. That, uh, yeah, I think they do. He's that about beer, to tell you. But I wasn't drinking it. Sorry. Not boar's yeah. head. All right. So you, he's, he has more discharge than even normal. Yeah. And you're and concerned. It's, it's kind of bitter tasting. Well, it, it is. It is. It's called galacteria. It's really a kind of a milk production, and uh, it ought to be looked at medically. It's probably nothing given that he's been there for that for a long period of time, but it is not a necessarily normal phenomenon. Is it as bad as pearly penile papules? Worse. What's pearly that? penile papules are normal. Mm. It's called because I have those. Do you have pearly penile papules? <laughs> really? In my freezer. <laughs> what is that? It's nothing. It, you little, have little... to have a penis, and Kennedy only has part of a penis, so I, so I know she's lying. <laughs> All right, so, so I, Tori, don't don't lick it if it's if it tastes pooey. No, it's not bad; it's just kind of bitter. But um, Funny. I was just wondering if that was normal. It is or... not normal. He ought to get it checked out. It's not one of those puberty things. Uh, it, it can well, it's be. It's not like it like comes spurting out or anything. I understand. There's there really shouldn't be any. Does he ever fake it when he spurts it out? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so Tori, tell him to get it checked out. All right. This could be something, right, Drew? What's it called? Galacteria. Uh. Wasn't Gil Milk Gerard Martin. in that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kennedy. Oh, that was funny. This is a little Battlestar Galactica joke there. No, he was Buck Rogers. He was? Yeah. Oh, for Christ's sake. Lauren Green. Jennifer, 14, you're on Loveline with Kennedy. Hi, Kennedy. I just want to say that you're my favorite VJ. I'm being completely honest. And um, I want to ask you a question first. Okay. Okay, Thank you for that, like by the way. hugging Marilyn Manson? Because I have it recorded, and I just keep on seeing him hugging you. I mean, it's... it's uh, it made my heart beat faster and gave me surges of adrenaline. Because he has... And made my ribs cage hurt. The Satanism? He's into Satanism or some crap well, like that? he's a self-proclaimed Satanist, but uh, I don't think he takes that Satan thing very seriously. He says that he's actually scared of the devil and he sleeps with the light on. Yeah, yeah, I read that. All right, but let me ask Kennedy a question. First off, Jen uh, Jennifer? Yes? Is Kennedy your favorite because you really love her or you just hate all the other... MTV VJs. Uh, Idalis makes me sick because he's too pretty. Okay. Simon Rex makes all me right, sick. All right, please don't rub it in. I just want to get to the truth. Now, Kenny, let me ask you. You get all these people come come trouncing through the studio. And to me, it seems like a lot of this stuff's a lot of rap just to move a few CDs. Do you, do you ever get that feeling? Well, it's not like people just stop by because uh, they think MTV is a warm place to be. I mean, they're obviously selling something. Right, but do you get the idea that, that this sort of satanic stuff, or I mean, oh, are they overdoing thing. it a little bit? Do they really buy into it, or yes, are they just I, trying I to sell CDs to dumb 15-year-olds? The guys in Marilyn Manson are very nice, but um, and I think some of their songs are actually pretty cool, but the whole Satan thing, 
I think it's it's almost uh it's almost style. a novelty. A yeah. Style. It's a it's a bit of a joke. Kennedy. To take the piss out of the parents. Yes, Jennifer. Oh, does that guy Pogo does he have like Tourette's syndrome or something? Because he kept on moving back and back and forth, back and forth. Maybe back. he has A D D. That's fairly common in adults. Was he in the band? Yeah. Yeah, well if you're named Pogo, you you, you He used to be Madonna though. You should his name used to be Madonna. Well, every every man in the band has a woman's first name and a serial killer's last name. Oh, nice. okay. All right, so good. Daisy Berkowitz, Madonna Wayne Gacy, Marilyn Manson. Good. Well, Mason. plenty nice. of stupid kids can buy the record. <laughs> Fantastic, and he can be humiliated when he gets into his forties. Amy. It's called Smells Like Children. It's an EP available on. Nothing I records. don't. No one buy that crap. Amy, fifteen. <laughs> you're on Love Line with Hi. Kennedy. Hi. Hey. Hi, Amy. Um, I have a problem that if any of you can help me, you know. Um, recently, well, my mom and I, we've always been fighting and everything, but recently it's gotten pretty bad, and last week, my cousin got married, well, she got married on Sunday, and... Who would get married on a Sunday? <laughs> she did. Uh, except for upstanding young citizens in the world, <laughs> and Dr. Drew. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> who would have sex on their first date? Can you believe that, Kennedy? <laughs> right there. No! Really? Oh, yes. He cut himself a slice right in, right in the station wagon, My right on the first day. My goodness. All right, Amy, didn't even finish the salad. Amy, <laughs> um, go ahead. Okay, well, a few days before the wedding, you know how, like, we have family from all over the country visiting us and stuff? Oh, yeah, I knew that. Oh, okay, well, a few days before the wedding, my mom and I just got in a really bad fight, and she called me down into the kitchen. We were just talking, and then she's like, okay, get this straight. Right after the wedding, you and I are going to go see a lawyer, and we're going to get divorced. And she was, like, so serious and everything. She said she was going to divorce you? Yeah. What a horrible parent. What could you possibly do that would be so bad? What, do you argue with her? Do you sass her? Doesn't she realize that's you trying to gain your independence? Yeah, you trying exactly. To... I mean... But do you do drugs? No, I've never done drugs. Do you drugs. sleep around with the boys? No, Anything I've never. Is he criminal? Uh, yeah, any any criminal activity, shoplifting, because that all passes. All young girls go through that, and believe me, it passes. Is there a story? No, I mean, I've never done that. I've... Every girl in 7th and 8th grade, like, the big thing to steal was Laurel Birch earrings. And uh, so my best friend was like, ooh, I'm going to go to Nordstrom's and steal. Uh, and uh, she got arrested. You took a piece of farm equipment, didn't you, Kennedy? <laughs> Actually, it was a tool of husbandry. <laughs> but, you uh, did steal, Kennedy. The only time I ever stole, I took a pair of pants, Genera pants from the jean machine, and I'm very sorry because they were ugly and they went out of style. Did you wear your old like, pants like, over them and sort of well, hobble out of the... my friend Carrie and I went into the dressing room with like 15 pairs of pants together and we each stole a pair of pants and it was horrible and you shouldn't do that. But nowadays they didn't have little metal things that you put on clothes and they beep when you go right. to the store. Right, but Kennedy, you know yeah. who pays for those pants you <laughs> stole? The taxpayers do. Yes, me, the yeah, consumer. That's And that's a horrible thing. I didn't care about you when I was 12 years old. Absolutely not. But I, I do very much now, not just because I know you. Are. All right. Well, I'd like to be reimbursed in the form of sex after the show. <laughs> Amy, mm-hmm. your mom wants a divorce from you. Well, okay. See, the thing is that she and I always fight, and she always says horrible stuff like that to me. All right. And she's bluffing, me. Amy. Yeah, I know. But, okay. And then, like, the next day she'll say, oh, I'm sorry. I regret what I said. But it's like. I mean, she shouldn't say so, that in the first so it's place. It's sort of a exactly. cycle of abuse, you know. That's pe- your uh, people place. that abuse other people do that. They abuse them and then go, "I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry. Forgive me." Yeah. And it does. That's you. No, you don't forgive them that. Yeah. You don't forgive them when, when they abuse. Keeps doing you. that. She always tells me experience. that she has like this inferior <laughs> inferiority complex. She has that. Well, she says she does. Yeah. But she's like so overbearing. Ooh, with mom, us. big needle lady whipping out the lingo. Woo. Where is she? She's um. I think she's sleeping. Uh huh. You want to check? Go wake her up. Give her a blanket party. See how that feels in divorce court. Yeah, Kennedy could talk some sense into this woman. Yeah, wake her up. Put her on the phone. I have a lot to say to her. Well, My mother, she... as many times as we fought, and believe me, teenage girls and their mothers fight like cats and dogs. And when you're 18, you move out of the house, you get really sad because you realize your mother is such a great person. <laughs> but so I fought with my mom like crazy over stupid, stupid things because it's like your hormones are going nuts and you totally want to be an independent person. So you fight with your mom because she's, you know, dealing with Yeah, you're combative. And she seems like the biggest dork in the world, you know, even though she totally loves you. But as mad as my mom ever got, she never called me names and she never would ever say, I'm going to divorce you. Because that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but threatening abandonment is really sort of the ultimate trump card. And it's it's the way to hurt you the most emotionally, oh, yeah? particularly oh, a yeah, young Mom? teenager. How about when you're 65? How about I abandon you then right on the street, honey? You and your walker. Huh? Your, Who's going to have control of them? In hmm? your bag. Uh, Amy. Uh-huh. We're going to put you on hold. Okay. Go, you're going to get your mom. mom. 
And we're, we're, we're going to talk some sense no, in there. No, not going to do it because I've been to so many counselors and stuff. You know what? Home. Give us your number and we'll call her right back. Oh, God, I'm scared. Don't be scared. I don't want to do we'll that. We'll still though. be your friends. No, because, well, I'm sure to what she's going to do. Because, I mean, I've, like, told her that I, when we have family meetings and stuff, I always say, you know, our family is totally dysfunctional. But it's like my mom's like, no, counseling is for crazy people. Mm. Yeah. And the whole time. And like I have mom. Like, so you say, and and so? <laughs> well, yeah, and that's you know, why we're going to counseling. And I have a theory for her, too. And I've, like, told it to her, but she doesn't seem to, like, comprehend it. All right, Amy. Uh-huh. We can't get to all this right now. But here's here's my parting words from Amy, for Amy. You know your mom has a screw loose. You know she's not right. You know she's unfair. She's vindictive at times. She has a memory of convenience. And she's manipulative. Mm. Now, you're 15, and unfortunately, we get this all the time, where the the 14 year old, the 13 year old, has to play the parent mm. because the parent won't play the parent. Yeah. But Amy, you have to play the parent here. You have to understand what's going on, even though it's your own mom. You have to sort of distance yourself from the situation. And take care of yourself and do what's right. Do what's best for yourself because you know what. You sound like a woman of good sense. So Absolutely. That. But you know that that abandonment stuff starts early. Like oh, I yeah. remember like oh, yeah. when I was like 6 and at Disneyland and I was hanging out by like uh, Dumbo's World or mm-hmm. something and the folks wanted to move on or were leaving they'd go bye. and they'd go bye and you'd go ah oh, come on. and they'd go oh I guess we're going to have to leave Adam. I guess he's going <laughs> to and they work out a whole elaborate scenario. You know, I guess but they, he's gonna, but they don't do it. He's going to have to get a job at Disneyland, <laughs> and, and he'll be one of the guys who has to clean up after the Clydesdales, <laughs> and then his teeth will fall out because he has no metal. And about halfway into that, you just burst into, ah! <laughs> now, Drew, have you ever bluffed your kids yet? When they were starting when they were about two. You did. You, we're going to we're going to leave you. We, we learned we learned the, the trick. Bye. Bye. But isn't that traumatizing? No, bye. No, bye. Yeah. Drew, that's traumatizing. No, but it, 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 you do it very gently. It's not not a great thing to do, believe me. But every, everybody does it, I think. Just right. thank your kids? No. But do you beat them? No. <laughs> no, I mean, you, but you parents... But they're hyperactive, I mean, right? No. Well, they're, they're hyper. They're but hyperkinetic. They're, they're, which, what your parents did is, is you know, that's, that's normal kinds of stuff. I mean, that's the kind of games of parents and children no, play. No, they, they wouldn't actually leave you. I didn't finish the story. Yes, they left. Oh, I, I was raised by uh, Dumbo. <laughs> and he did sweep off the there. Oh, it was horrible, That's Kennedy. Uh, Bono, 15. Bono, 15. Yeah. Whoever. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, this is probably for Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know if, like, body, what's it called, branding, mm-hmm. has any health risks. Obviously, it's a it's a burn. The burns get infected. You can you can have a that that problem. Obviously, and scarring can become sort of what we call dystrophic. It can become Ooh, you can overgrow. It can, it can become nasty. You get and fat. Yuck. Yeah. What about the professional done? I I don't know. You know, I don't hear much about that. I mean, I learn I learn from you guys that call in about piercings and tattoos. Yeah. It's not something that physicians typically know much about. Do they I, have professional branding houses? Yeah, they have a. Pr- they just opened one near in my town. Yeah, you know that's called Bono. It's called a ranch. <laughs> <laughs> you fool! But they only do it to eighteen-year-olds. You know they do. I've seen it. You know who does that? Uh, black fraternities. Right. They do the uh, alpha or or, or the omega. Well, the that's big. That's because sometimes on on really dark skin, it's hard to for a tattoo to show up. Oh, is that why they do it? Oh, okay. Because you'll see it like guys like professional athletes, right. stuff, football players. You see that big? Uh, yeah. It's the Greek. What is it, the A? Plus, there's I, I a lot more pain in branding than there is in tattoos. One would think, but it's over pretty quick, isn't it? How do they yeah, do that it, That would Bono? hurt for a while afterwards, I would think. Yeah, though. the burns healing, hurt. the yeah, burns blistering. Hurt. Do they put a local on it, do you know? A what? A local anesthetic? I don't, I think, um, like, that's part, it's like tattooing, it's just like, Part you, of the, you could use that Emla cream. The ritual or something. Or solar cane. A, no, Emla. It's actually numbs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. stuff that the dermatologist will give you. Yes. Yeah. It was like, remember the beginning of Kung Fu? No. Oh, for Christ's sake. Drew, remember the beginning of Kung Fu? Yeah. When he was at the uh, Shaolin Temple and there's uh, all those things. There's walking on rice paper and snatching things from guys' hands and stuff. There's mm-hmm. that one part where they had that big heated cauldron and it had those two dragon things on the outside and they came up and they put their inside of the wrists on each other. Mm-hmm. that's a good story Adam. <laughs> thank you hello this is justine and donna from elastica and you're listening to love line mm-hmm. 
1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Crowley's Dr. Drew. Tonight's surprise guest is the lovely Kennedy, you know, from MTV. No, I was just in the neighborhood. She was. I don't live too far away from here. You, uh, you're you doing this uh, MTV Beach House. Yeah, Beach House. Yep. Which has to be the greatest gig in the world. It's really nice working next to the ocean with really charming people every day. Are, are they long days? Uh, they can be. Because you, I don't know why, but yeah, I guess they can be. But uh, is but it... a lot of it's like a four-hour break sitting around. Right. You know. And do they import teenagers to like no come in there and pretty the place up? I don't know where those people come from. Uh huh. But I, I don't know. Any DJs you can't stand? VJs, sorry. No, I get along with everyone on air. Uh huh. All right, that's a company line, but seriously. No, for real, they they don't hire evil people. Like, uh, celebrities will come to the beach house and be like, holy cow, I can't believe how affected that person is. But it, usually it's not the celebrity, usually it's like the hairdresser. Any celebrities you can't stand? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there are. Uh-huh. You want to think any? All right, let's talk about your love life. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> You're still going out with that uh, snowboarding slacker? Yeah. It's like, snowboarder's not a job. That's a, yeah, barely it's, a hobby, this snowboarding. It's a very lucrative job. Really? Yeah. He makes a bunch of money snowboarding? Sure. They he, make... he rides a piece of wood for a living. <laughs> Snowboarders make some nice money. And he's still, he's true to you. Very. He's not getting any... Uh, Punani Nani. Punani up in a veil or something. Nope. But you're not giving it up, right? Why is that important? Because the show is called Love Line. Mm-hmm. Because... <laughs> We've established that I have a boyfriend. That's a huge miracle. Right. Itself. And how long have you been going out with him? 11 months. All right, so almost a year. And are, are you thinking marriage? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, of course I am. What's he thinking? I got to get some, he's thinking. I'm telling <laughs> you what he's thinking. I got to crack Vegas, this honey. nut. All right. That's I mean, fine. Get a dress on. Now, see, I think, and, and Drew, I'm sure, will agree with me, that because you've been holding out for basically your entire life, and I'm not counting the part for, like, pre-puberty, because <laughs> that's not really holding out. That's just throwing dirt clods and eating eating popsicles and stuff, but... <laughs> You've been holding out your whole life. Now, you're with this snowboarding guy, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure this guy's used to a certain fast lifestyle. No, he's not. He's such a nice man. Right. That's the way he paints it. But I'm No, he's such a good person. I know these snowboarding guys, though. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see you up there on the hill. Oh, absolutely. Drawn down with the bro bras. Yes, that's me. (laughs) I'm I'm riding the uh, quarter pipe, and uh, (laughs) I'm doing, I'm busting a groove. But here's the thing. This guy's used to women to put out. Oh, yeah. Now, just sluts all over the place. Right. Big, right. Women. Snow bunnies, we call them up mm-hmm. on the, the, the hood, the <laughs> white hood. Now, you're not putting out, and we understand that. Now, I think that'll get him to marry you because he's going to at least, he may divorce you after, you know, the first night, but he wants, <laughs> he wants this, right, Drew? I mean, don't, don't you think that's enticing to him? I, I think that is the way women assert their control in a relationship. I, th- I think they can really have their needs a prior, uh, priority. No, no, listen. I just think women can maintain their needs as a priority if they keep focused on what it is they want in the relationship, yeah. not just what the guy wants. Well, and, that's what my mom always taught me. Like, don't put out so a guy likes you more because he won't. Right. And this guy can't get rid of you now because he has almost a year of no sex He's invested. He's come too far to pull out now. Absolutely. And I'm glad you phrased it that way. <laughs> Nancy, 21, you're on Love Line with Kennedy. Hi. Hey. Hi, Nancy. Uh, hi. I just wanted to say, Kenny, no, no matter what anybody says, I do like you. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Kennedy. What do you mean, huh? no matter what a- anybody says? Do you know how many people come up to me and go, all of my friends hate you, every single one of my friends hate you, but I like you? What well, is I, that? I was just kidding What is that, that stuff. No, I was reading these <laughs> articles, and they were all bashing her. And for what? What are they bashing for? I don't know. What articles? Just these stupid ones a long time ago. Uh, let me say something very the quickly. The long time ago articles. Kennedy, so I'm going to defend the, you. The, 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 last, the last presidential election. Yeah. People have difficulty with Kennedy because she's outspoken. But everybody and she's a female and though. she's smart. And she's a little sassy and a bit of a pain in the ass. But <laughs> the main thing is, is she's a smart woman who can back up her outlandish political views. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Republican too, yeah. All right. But That's it's not, not just problem. about being a Republican. Yeah, I know. That's not my problem. I'm really like worried about this i'm sorry don't worry we've got publicists i i employ thousands of people to put spin control on all of these negative things nancy everything's going to be just fine rest easy nancy okay where do i begin okay should i just like blurt it out 
Okay. Oh, you want to talk about you? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just no, I'm, to. I'm just kidding, Nancy. It was all. Okay. Um, I just got divorced, and um, the relationship, I, we were married for a year, mm-hmm. and um, it was a very married? abusive, every possible way you could imagine. You should figure out if someone's abusive before you get married. Like, it, it didn't push happen. their buttons once in a while. Right, it Drew? It didn't happen that way. Some people hide it pretty carefully. Yeah. yeah. But, like, that guy smacked you with, like, a binding or something. Well, no, you wouldn't like, get married, right, Kenny? Yeah, he would not be alive too long. All right, Nancy. So he was abusive after you. But he you... would never do that. All right. Yeah. That's what you think. He, he... I've, no, see, I've dated enough men to know when men are abusive. And, and let me tell you something. You're right. Because if, if they're not getting any sex. <laughs> they that, leave. They will. Right. After about 30 days, it's like, all right, sweetie, had a good time. No. And I'm saying if there ever was a time for a man to get abusive, it's when he's not getting any love. Oh, no. I, I did have two guys get weird on me. Oh. No, but see. He okay. Had we'll get into that in a minute. But go ahead. At the same time. Sorry, Nancy. This that's is... a, no, that's okay. Anyway, so now I'm, like, divorced as of a couple days ago it was final. And I, okay, before when I was married, I, my husband was the only person I'd ever been with, like, sexually or anything. I, like, saved myself till I was married and stuff. Now I am totally horny every single day, and I am freaking out. I am totally out of control. I mean, I haven't, like... <laughs> I don't know what to do. Okay, I went over to my friend's house and I was going to tell him how I felt about him for the past six years and I haven't told him yet. And I ended up messing around with his roommate. Wow. I also told him how I felt about him. And you messed around with him too? Not him yet, but I told him how I felt about him. But I want to start a relationship with his roommate. All right, so you went over to this guy's house you've been friends with for six years, you've been pining for for six years. Yes. The roommate answered the door, and no. you got it down with him. No, the roommate went, no, okay, my friend went to the store. While they were gone, me and his roommate only met like two or three times. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's, still it's, it's essentially what I said. Yeah. Right. So you're lucky there wasn't a guy over there uh, sucking the septic tank out, or you probably would have had to blow him, too. Oh, by the way, Waste Tech, some of the finest poop pumpers in all of Los Angeles. <laughs> Thanks for that plug. Nancy, so you're out of control. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. not only in that way. I mean, I'm talking about in other ways. I mean, like... <clears throat> the gambling? Well, I mean, like... I just got a tattoo on my neck, and I... Oh, that's such a bad neck. place for a tattoo. If you've, is that your first tattoo? Oh, no. Okay. Well, I was this say, this sounds, I actually, I think, probably more complicated than it seems on the well, surface. Well, I'm, like, thinking of shaving my head. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. No, I mean, she she has been in this abusive relationship, and that has sort of rattled her cage. Okay, he wouldn't let me go out. Okay, hold All on. All right, that's right. All right, she's rebelling. No, he, but, he kept control over no, her. He yeah, just but, said she, she wouldn't, he wouldn't about, let her go out. Think about the kind of people that get into those kinds of terribly abusive relationships. Screwed up people. Yeah. The ones that are asking for it? The, well, no. That seek them out? No. No, but People, nobody asked say, for that. But, well, I but, know, but they but, seek it but, out but she, subconsciously yeah, right. because they were abused as children. Or... That's right. And so she has this traumatic past that now is beginning to surface as a result of this, whatever happened in this relationship. Mm. And she's acting out all these feelings. She is out of control emotionally. And he kept her pushed he, down he, and repressed. He, he, well, he, he repressed her, but he also met those needs for abuse and now she's starting to abuse herself and to you know she's completely out of she's control. like those snakes in those uh novelty toffee cans right in there for so long boom, boom he gets divorced the lid pops off she comes flying out one lands, snake is a boner another's a tattoo the other shaving, shaving the head, head the whole gambling problem you know <laughs> speaking of people like this we, we have a, a guy from hbo here tonight doing a special on self-mutilation people that cut on themselves Ooh. and uh well my uncle jerry right, is people, a clinical psychologist who right. works with all those people. i know i see a lot of them but if, if people if someone wants to call and talk about that he's gonna be doing interviews with front on camera people that do that sort all of right, stuff but let's let's wow. let's uh backtrack for a second here kennedy you said uh, you had a couple of guys get weird on you yeah what what what's up there? Just when guys get really worked up and you're not going to give up the nappy dugout, they tend to flip. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you pleasure them in other ways, it t- tends to take a little wind well, out of their sail. Yeah, but say you are dry humping, right? And uh, you know they expect right. Yeah, you know. yeah, because the penis has a momentum all its own. Once it Apparently. gets started, it's 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 gone. You can't control it anymore. It's like those uh, sci-fi movies where they <laughs> create some sort of organism. For defense purposes, but the thing gets too smart, and then it breaks out of the facility, yeah. and then it just takes off on its own. It always kills, by Natasha the way. Natasha Henstridge, that movie last summer. 
Right, a species. Species. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's what happens. It's pieces. <laughs> the guy's penis breaks out of the of the genes and and it 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 runs amok all over the side of your leg and mm. sofa. <laughs> yeah, but I had to jump out of the guy's car. Really? Yeah. And was I was it, like, eh, was eh, it moving? Eh. <laughs> the car? No, you were parked and you were getting it on, almost getting it on, and he yeah, kept going. Yeah. He got weird. Did no, he hit like, you or anything? No, but I thought he was going to pin me down. Uh huh. Because that's what started happening. I was like, whoa. Did you ever see the guy again? Yeah, I saw him again. He's like, oh, what is your name? And I was like, yeah, you know what my name is. Uh huh. Where Hitch. were you? Were you like, uh, no, I was like 16 uh. in Portland. Oh, oh 16. Like, oh, no. I, that, no, I, I want still post celebrity an stuff. Old. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, all right. So it's, you did the, you did the right thing. Right? Yeah. I, okay. Still a virgin? Everything in brother's out to a. Hi, I'm in check. <laughs> Do you have one of those still? <laughs> yes? Do you, I, I have the probability of me having a hymen is about as good yeah, as you're too old. having one. Too much snowboarding, wrestling, horseback riding, and, and boxing, right? I'm a walking tampon commercial. <laughs> Lindsay, 14, you're on Loveline with Kennedy. Uh, hi. Um, <laughs> I have a problem. Okay, well, my stepbrother, he's 17. How old are you? I'm 14. Okay. And he's 17, and we've been making out in our basement. <laughs> ba, ba, yeah. ba. And, um, well, our parents are married, mm-hmm. and... Hence, he's your stepbrother. Yeah, and um, they're getting suspicious, and I don't know what I should say to them or what I should say to him. I don't know whether I should break it off or what. Break it off. Amen. Yeah, that's a little weird. Because you're going to end up hating him. Like, how long have they been married? How long have you and your stepbrother known each other? Um, I've known him since sixth grade. and so for I, about three years? Yeah. So let me put this in perspective. It's like uh, Peter getting it on with Jan. Uh, actually, Peter getting it on with Cindy. Oh, yeah. Or Greg getting it on with Cindy. Oh, Wait okay. a minute. That I'm kind of like. Uh, Lindsay, <laughs> how far have you gone with this guy? Um, and be honest here. If you're asking if we had sex, no, we haven't. Are you from the Midwest? Yes, I am. Where? Wisconsin. That's one of my favorite accents. Uh, Do you ever go to Madison and get cream custard? It's fabulous. All right, the girl has a very serious problem, Kennedy. <laughs> I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was in Wisconsin last week. All right, all right, all right. Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay. <laughs> You, you have to cut this off. I mean, think about think I about. I mean, not literally, Lindsay, but you uh, for have a couple to reasons. Break it off. One is a you could, you guys could kindle some heavy feelings, and the relationship is not something that's likely to last. Then how are you going to mm. deal with the breakup? B, even if you don't have any very strong connections, emotion with one another, it's still going to create tremendous discomfort by violating what would be normal boundaries within a family. And in a few months, I mean, it's going to be eighteen, and um, it will be yeah. statutory rape. Imagine, right? Is that is the age issue? And imagine Thanksgivings for the rest of your life. I mean, she's just about to say no, Thanksgiving. And you okay? Now say that you decide you guys get into this heavy thing, and you're like, he's the one. He's so romantic. It won't he's happen. So great. And then you decide to have sex, and then you're like, wait a second, I just had sex with my stepbrother. Ew! And then you have these just harsh, nasty feelings in the pit of your stomach for the rest of your life. It sounded awfully Which, personal, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, Kennedy, Create are you issues. reliving something or is this... No, you... I just, I can... Okay, the only experience I've had kind of close to that, my dad was dating a woman and I went out with her son. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, we'll and get... And they, they used to keep us in separate ends of the house. All right, well, what, but love prevailed. Well, eventually. We'll get into this. Much that... later, though. We'll get into Kennedy and her uh, deviant dating. <laughs> After this. Is a bad splendid thing. Hey, Loveline fans, 1 800 L O V E 191. That would be the phone number. 310 854 4455. That would be the fax number. I'm Adam Kroll. He's Dr. Drew. Next week, we have Fred Schneider from the B-52s, Adam West. I'm Fred Schneider! <laughs> and the Deftones. And that was not Fred Schneider. That was MTV's Kennedy, who's... Uh, Don't kick your ass, Adam. Who, could, who really does number. kick some ass. Actually, when I was in New York... Uh, what was that, we like went to Julio's gym. Six or eight months ago. Yep. We went down to the gym, and we, we got it on. Strapped the gloves on and, and went Ken- to work. Kennedy's strong. She's tough. <laughs> She's got that. She has a lot of um, issues and a lot of pent up anger. Yeah, and that you said always, I was too. She's tight. Too intense. A little rigid. You have to have a certain. See, 
let me explain something. I don't mean to be racial here, but that's why white folks don't make the greatest boxers in the world. Because they're Did you o- see the Great White Height? No, I didn't. No. I didn't see that. I, yeah. I heard it was tremendous. It's it's not a movie. It's a film. It's it's a classic. This thing. But <laughs> here's the deal: white people are a little heavy on their feet yeah. in general, mm-hmm. and they're a little uptight. You know that whole rhythm thing, and and Kennedy, that's what you need to do. You're a little uptight. It's like a Republican thing. You need yeah. to kind of loosen up the hands a little. You got to get the neck moving a little, and you got to you know like you know Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard. You the gotta- guy who told me how to box that I had Joe Frazier leg. <laughs> And I think that's a big compliment. And I saw Joe Frazier once, and I was like, oh, my gosh, supposedly I have your legs. And he was like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Yeah, he's a little, listen, he was no scholar before punchy. he got into the ring. <laughs> now he's super dumb. Uh, yeah, that's not a, yeah, he was built like a jukebox, this Joe Frazier, so that's not the greatest compliment. But uh, I think you look hot in a pair of shorts. Thanks, Adam. Or uh, without the shorts. James, 19, you're on Love Line with Kennedy. Hi, um, I think that I'm obsessed. Uh, how do you say that? Obsessed? Yeah, with, with this girl I, I know. All right. Oh, no. For about three years, and I didn't realize it. Oh, no. Don't how become obsessed with anyone. It's not fun. How could you not, not realize it? <laughs> yeah, if you don't realize it, you can't really be obsessed, can you? Right. You have to be, obsession means a preoccupation. Well, um, like I, I met her three years ago, and, and like I said, you know, um, like I, I met her, you know, and, I kept asking her out, you know, for, for the last three years, and, and you know, and, and she kept saying no, you know, but yeah. we're still friends, you know, but, but it's like if I, I... Don't say you know, it makes you sound cheap. Huh? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, I want to go out with other girls, but, but it's like a, I won't go because I keep thinking about her. Okay. But she turned you down. Yeah. And she's consistently turned you down. You know what, though? If you go out with another girl, maybe it'll make her jealous and she'll actually go out with you. You think that will work? Yeah, I think that'll work. Absolutely. Worked When I was a freshman in high school, I went out with this guy, Derek, and he was obsessed with this girl, Jill, for two years. (laughs) And she was a big old biz. So when he started going out with me, she got super jealous and she was really mean to me. And, like, I gave her a dead fly once and she flipped out. It's like, what's your problem? I was like, yeah, man. But, um, so... She, after I broke up with him, she went out with him. She's like, I can't live without your love, Derek. James, it definitely works. Because I was in high school. I used to masturbate to this one girl. <laughs> and then I started masturbating to this other girl. Uh-huh. And then the first one I used to masturbate to, uh-huh. she, like, got into a fight with the other one, you know, just, like, in my thought bubble. And, and then it turned into a mud wrestling match with yeah, oil. Yeah. And then my dad came in, but it wasn't my dad, but I still knew it was my dad, but he was wearing a blonde wig. Uh-huh. <laughs> you with me, James? James. Yeah. Forget her. You've been trying for three years. She's not interested. Kennedy's right. I hate to admit it, but Kennedy is right. You go out with another girl, you lead your life, and if it if it is meant to be, it will be. She will find you. And... and it's true. Women, women like the women look at a guy who's single oftentimes, and they go, oh, "Why is he single? Something's yeah. up with him." But when they see him in when the arms of another gay woman, man or a married man, they're like, "Oh my gosh, she's the greatest! Why can't he be single?" Because if he was, you wouldn't be attracted to him. Right. Same with the gay thing. Okay, my friend right now is in love with a man who's about to be married, and they had sexual intercourse several times. Mm. And so, uh, you know, she kind of distanced herself from him. And he's like, "Why didn't you call me?" You know, it's like, what's up? And uh, I need you. And but he's still getting married. It puts mm-hmm. a little fire. It puts a fire under the whole yeah, thing and kind of gets things bubbling a little bit. Neither of them are available. All right. Terrible. No, but it makes it seem like whenever you can't have something, that's why people fall in love over the phone. Because, right. Because you know, it's something you can't have, and it just it makes it seem that much more valuable. And it's a false. Well, message. it's like I was the feelings I had for you when you were over there in New York. Now that you're here, it's no big deal. Sarah. Adam, I'm so jealous now. <laughs> It's like when of you the t- girl you masturbate to now. Oh, you're going to be in there. <laughs> Great. I can't wait. Sarah, I've missed it so much. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm out of respect for you, I'm, I'm just going to have you start off as like the towel girl. Oh, thanks. In, How about the card girl? No, oh, yeah. They the sell round like, card girl. Sell like cigarettes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then eventually I'll work you into, into, into the nudity part. Mm, that's great. Sarah, 17, you're on Loveline with Kennedy. Hi. I have a question for you guys. Okay. Mm. Okay. Sometimes when I have sex, like afterwards, I can hurt. I'm like sore, and I can hurt from like at least as one day and as much as three days. Mm. 
And Where are you sore? Inside? Like, like yeah. deep inside? Yeah. Well, see, that like, could be... Um, could be a lot of things. Yeah, that could be a lot of things. And I, I know I don't have, like, any diseases or anything. Well, I mean, you don't know what... You, have you had a pelvic exam since this started? Yeah. Well, no, not since it started, but I've had one. Well, how long ago was that? That was the beginning of this year. It wasn't too long ago, and everything was fine. No, nothing they could find. You could have like an ovarian infection. You or... could have right. You could have infections. It, it, almost anywhere in the genital tract, infection can cause pain. It can, and the, even infection in the vagina, the cervix, and the tubes. You can have ovarian cysts. You could have endometriosis. I mean, a seventeen-year-old doesn't typically have those sorts of problems all of a sudden, but it can yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I'd be checked out. Okay. okay, I have another question for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, you know how you guys always say. Um, when you smoke pot, that Mary Jane for, grass. <laughs> yeah, for guys, you like they go limp. <laughs> we don't, no, always, we say don't that. always say that. Well, well, um, my boyfriend, it's like the opposite for him. Yeah, and, but... it like uh, it intensifies it or something. Yeah, that could be part of your problem, Sarah. <laughs> Here's the deal: uh, get get yourself a little uh, lubrication and hide the bong. <laughs> That's I mean, because obviously, decent this, advice. It's not bad advice, yeah. is it, Drew? Yeah. This guy's hurting her. He's yeah. using his penis as a weapon. I just felt like shouting that. <laughs> right. Well, that's because you didn't have any part in the technical. Yeah, I felt left out. Yeah, I was ovarian cyst. What do I know from ovarian cyst? <laughs> I know I have them, but that's all I know. I have to keep drawing him pictures of the female genital tract. What ever happened to Grandpa Munster? Oh, <laughs> oh for Christ's sake. Don't bring that up. What happened? Troy, 25. No, I'll no, throw no, your no. ass. What oh, happened? Drew. I have to hear this. <laughs> no. What Drew, happened? Drew, please. He won't know who you are. There's no way the grandpa must <laughs> Drew, what please. happened? You must say. I must will go <laughs> into commercial to... right what? now. He what? Tr- please. Troy, 25. You're on Loveline with uh, the fleeting Kennedy. Catch <laughs> yeah, her while she's yeah. in studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... It's not really a question. Um, I have a problem with my ex fiance. Uh, I have an 11 month old son with her, mm-hmm. and I just brought him back home yesterday. I had him for the day, and her and her three friends started jumping in on me, and I have to defend myself to three different people. Mm-hmm. Now I paid child support in February, and then I've just called to get um, child support arranged so I could see him. But in the state of Minnesota where I live, um, she has all the rights. But I don't have the money to go to court to fight this. So I, I'm, i like, stuck. And she won't talk to me because she just is like that. Kennedy, go ahead. I'm looking at Drew's drawing of the I'm ovaries. I'm looking at Drew's drawing, too. Is that... It's a Jewish man wearing glasses as far as I can... Is that a face or a penis? Is that... Oh, that's... Is that the ovaries, the fallopian mm. thing? All right. Adam needs this. The uterus, Troy. the cervix. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you're, you want to visit your son... And I'm actually trying to take initiative. Go, go figure that, a father that actually wants to see his son. Right. And what is the main problem they have with this? Dennis Rodman is going through the same thing right now. I saw him talk about it on Oprah, and it's very sad. <laughs> the whole problem is, is I, I don't know what her problem is. She just doesn't like me, period. And, and How come it is, Drew, that, that mothers uh-huh. who are somewhat abusive have total control over the custody situation? I don't and, know. That's a legal issue. She's got complete control because up here, the law states if you're not married, that the woman has complete control. Yeah, general, general. It's, it seems to me that things tend to come down on the side of, of the mother. Mm-hmm. What yeah. if the mother is an unfit parent? I, I don't know. Troy, is she unfit? Uh, yeah, her mom um, even told me one time that um, she went out partying the night before, and her stepfather was downstairs, and her mom was upstairs, and, and uh, my ex was sleeping, and my 11-month-old old son is standing at the top of the steps. He can uh, walk her already? father came up, and he could have easily fallen down. Right. Okay. So, Troy, you need to get some legal representation. I right. mean, you know, we... Can't, my whole point is I can't afford it. You call you legal... Get up on the phone and tell her to let him see his son. Legal aid societies? Uh, I tried legal aid. I don't live in the right county. I have to go to this, uh, it's a father partnership is what it's called. Yeah, they have like these groups called like, uh, DAM, like Dads Against Moms or something like that, where you can, you can join up with these. I mean, these are things that didn't exist 10 years ago. Right. But they are starting to sprout up. I don't know if there's any where you are, but I'm sure if you got in touch with one of these organizations, that they could steer you in the right direction because that's all they do. Do you think I should keep calling her we and just, say, hey, can I see my son? Or just say the hell with it and wait till I go to court? Don't agitate her, Troy. 
don't don't antagonize her. Don't yeah, get under her make skin. Yeah, everything worse for your son, and you just want things to be good for him. So right. basically, just kind of leave it alone. L- leave it alone and do a little research. All right. I mean, figure out what your options are. Get in touch with these organizations and uh, get your uh, ducks in a row. And then when you go into court, you'll be ready. All right. I'd like to say one other thing. You guys have a great show. And about your thing about condoms in school, they should have more of it. Right on. You wouldn't be in the scrape you're in now, would you, Troy? No, actually. Oh, ouch. (laughs) Oh. Oh, come on. He knows I'm kidding. More Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Tonight's surprise guest is the lovely Kennedy from MTV. Now, Kennedy. Hi, Adam. Very nice for you to have me inside your studio. Oh, it's a pleasure. And it's so nice that um, Love Line is syndicated. Now. Yes, I can hear you all as if you're not in enough uh, bedrooms of, of youngsters around this country. No, I'm no Jenny McCarthy. Now, let me ask you this. You're okay. twice as hot as she could ever dream of being. Oh, come on. Okay. All right. <laughs> but let me ask you this. You, you've been doing uh, MTV for how many years now? Almost four. It'll be four in September. Really? Because mm-hmm. it felt like you were like with J.J. Jackson in the original. It felt like it to me, too. I group. know what you mean. But are are you the eldest of the ones that are on the, the well, recent batch? Well, Tabitha and Kurt have both been there for a lot longer than I have. Yeah, but they're doing the news, right? Yeah. All right. So you're the oldest VJ. I think so, yeah. Well, maybe not numerically, but I mean, you've been there the longest. Well, Bill and I have been there about the same time. And now... You must get offers to do, like, movies or TV shows on, you know, other networks and things Thanks. like that. Anything cooking or what's going on with um, that? Yeah, I've had a few offers lately. Mm-hmm. Like what? Thanks. Can't talk about? No. Uh-huh. But maybe like a little, like a little Ricky Lake type thing? Or no. Maybe like a little, like a little movie of the week, like, no. um, Not Without My Hymen or some <laughs> sort of... We always do, like, Not Without My Dachshund. <laughs> Not without my brass or not for the love of the hymen or <laughs> a tragic story about a woman whose hymen was abducted and taken to Saudi Arabia. Now, one mother struggled to get her hymen back. Oh, so Lord. nothing like that. There are horrible things that happen to women. Women are mutilated. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, we're we're yes. going to... Somali women. Oh, yes. Hold I on. Hey, it happens wait. in this country. Wait. That is ba- absolutely... Ha- ba- right, ba- we're going to talk ba- about ba- this when we get back. Ba- ba- when we get back. I'm we're going to get into it. It's just... We're going to get... Now that you say hymen, I'm like... We're going to get into clitoral mutilation ah. in 10 seconds. We's back with the lovely and outspoken, the vivacious Kennedy from oh, Adam, MTV. you flatter. I certainly oh, yeah, do. How are you? we got to go boxing now that okay. you're in town and I didn't know you're in town. All right. Kennedy and I, I have a... I didn't bring any of my wait, stuff. I'm going to go back to the topic that Kennedy was talking about that before the break. That is absolutely... Uh, we, will, we will get into that. Just right. Let me just say something about Kennedy and my... Um, relationship oh really i didn't know you had one well until we, tonight we don't here's our relationship kennedy will call me from new york mm-hmm. at home every maybe once every like three months mm-hmm. and we'll talk on the phone for about an hour and 45 minutes uh-huh. on her dime and we'll you know we'll say okay i mean it's like we're we're lovers or something i wouldn't go that far out all right but we i re- think you're a great conversationalist and you're really fun to talk to. oh okay so we have these but long it's not like i'm going oh Adam. oh baby what are you wearing oh yeah Put me in your yeah, bubble see, tonight. Put you, me in your bubble. If you did that, the conversation would only be three minutes. <laughs> but here's the deal. We talk on the phone for a long time, and then I say, listen, Kenny, when you come in town, we're going to go boxing. We're going to go do something. Because okay. she's dropped $65 on a phone call, and I figure we got to get together. And then she comes into town. I find out she's been in for two weeks and no phone call. This Sunday. I've been this Sunday acclimating. boxing. This Sunday. Oh, you're out of town no, I'm this out Sunday. of town. All I right, have but, to go to a wedding. All right, but we'll do it. How long are you going to be in town? Till September. Okay, so we'll do it. All right, now let's talk about uh, genital mutilation. Yeah, female genital mutilation, which is is actually common worldwide. Do you know what happens yes. to these in women, fact, though? Yes, in fact, the New England Journal of Medicine actually published a review article all of, of all the different kinds of mutilation that occurs oh, where they sew women's God. vaginas up. And they, yes, but they yeah. do it. Gypsy women do uh, it in the middle of the night oh, to oh, these yeah. Somali girls yes, yes, yes. between the ages of 5 and 11. Oh, yes. In they, the middle look, of the night, in, they are woken up. Hey, and look, with, in, in certain... Uh, Sort of Middle Eastern cultures that was done by the fathers to the daughters oh, when they're you know, ten, nine years God, old. It's not so. just clitorectomies. I mean, they cut off all external genitalia and then sew it up, like yes. sew the women up, and yes. and they only allow a tiny opening yes. for blood and urine to come That's out. Right. And sometimes they don't even make it big enough, and the women die That's right. because blood collects in their vaginal cavity. And the urine, so yeah, it's so sad. Don't you think they had it coming? Yeah, it's it's amazing the way women are treated throughout the world. All right, let's just let me mediate here for a second. Now, Drew, don't jump in. Kennedy, 
Uh, Gypsies come to Somalia. Let's finish this story. <laughs> Drew jumped in. I was halfway into well, Gypsies I, I, I in don't, Somalia. It doesn't matter what the specific culture is. There's many different man manifestations of the same kind of practice. Why are these gypsies doing this? It's custom. But these aren't the same gypsies Cher was singing about years ago, <laughs> was it? Oh, poor Cher. It's custom to go into... Poor like Cher? She, look at her face. All right, let's what not worry about Cher. She yeah, she's... she's it looks okay. like she's wearing a mask or she's a drag queen. Please, but it, 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 it... She could be such a lovely woman, just show some age. But at least her vagina's in one piece. Last I looked, yeah, woo! <laughs> All right, so Drew, what what other horror stories of no, uh, I mean, vaginal that's it. That's mutilation? It. And, uh, no, I mean, there's all... That, there's a, we had a tape of it. Where's Ann? She's not there. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see yeah. a tape. We had a, I could, it, was on, it was actually on, a, a, on like a 2020 or a television. That oh, would right. make me so sick to my stomach. Did you realize that would do to my masturbatory schedule? Could throw That's it off terrible. by hours. You ready to get back to the phone? Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's not right. And then the men undo them on their wedding night so they can impress. So it's like one of it's like a little silk purse or chastity, something. It's a, more like a chastity okay. operation. Okay, but um, uh, Kennedy, this sounds like a cause for you and your MTV friends. Oh, okay. I'll get John Sensio and Simon Rex right on it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Will, fifteen, you're on Love Line with Kennedy. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Hi, Will. Um, yeah, I have a question about chewing tobacco. Mm-hmm. And I've been chewing for about three months, and I have these white spots on my lip. Leukoplakia. Which which is really on the gum or cheek, leukoplakia, not on the lip typically. Yeah, yeah. it can be right there. It, yeah, that, that's really not that's really the cheek membrane. But he, I think the lip, lip lip is really this. Do you mean the lip lip or inside the lip? Inside. Oh, that's, oh that could be leukoplakia. Well, That'd be go. pretty peculiar to get it that quickly, but it it, it is at least. My gums are I chewed tobacco for like two weeks, and my gums are seated. Yeah, it, 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 smokeless tobacco is a serious uh, form of uh, nicotine addiction. Yes, uh, it is probably more addicting even than smoking tobacco. But you know what? That's how I gave up smoking. And it uh, it can cause cancer. There's no doubt about it. My sister-in-law's uh, father just had throat cancer. He uh, was cut from here to here and uh, here to here. Uh, and he had to have his teeth removed and uh, it's a horrible operation yeah. because he smoked his whole life. And I don't know if he chewed No, wait a minute. Did, did the gypsies do that to him? That's funny, Adam. Yeah, let's just bring the show right down into hell. Well, I'm not the one who's talking about cancer. And remember the tape we had on the female genital mutilation? What, what the TV show was that from? 2020 or something? Dateline. Dateline. Somewhere. America's Funniest Videos. Do, do you still have it? No. Okay. I don't want to see it. I know atrocities exist in the world, and my uh, sympathy to those who um, are atrocitized by these atrocities. I really feel bad for these people, but I have enough pain in my life. If I see it, it'll upset me. Yeah. I God so forbid. The point is, don't chew tobacco. Why did you even start? All right. Will? Yeah. Spit the dip out. But... And pick up the syringe. But what? It tastes horrible. Girls don't want to kiss you. Your teeth get yellow. You smell bad. Do, but is it cancer or is it? I, I doubt. Is... I doubted it that quick. But leukoplakia, which is what, Ken, uh, what Kennedy's referring to, is Isn't one of the early cancer? changes before cancer. Exactly. Yeah. Miranda, nineteen, you're on Love Line. How do people do Hi. that to themselves? With um, Kennedy. Hi. Um. Okay. My I, problem. I sound like someone's I mom. Just broke up you know, not long ago with my boyfriend and I guess part of the reason was because I was afraid of giving oral sex and I don't know if that's like a problem of mine or if it's normal I don't know afraid of it or just didn't want to do it who me yeah, yeah I guess that too I'm you afraid. just didn't want to do it yeah okay I don't I'm afraid of the, I guess the penis so I don't know if that's normal or what have we ever traumatized by ever trapped under a penis while the the river was <laughs> rising or anything? Not that I know of, but I don't know if it's something. I'm 19 and I've never had sex either, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Or well, let me give you my quick take on this, Miranda. Oh uh, boy, here now, we go. No, I'm going. I'm going the uh, the uh, nature route on this one. Some women are really worship the penis. They enjoy the penis, and they can't <laughs> keep the penis out of their mouth. And other women. Would rather have a, a dentist drill in their mouth than pleasure their boyfriend that way. That's how I am. But see, I don't mind when he did it to me. <laughs> oh well, of course, darling. That's only natural. <laughs> but so it's nothing um, abnormal. Not that we could easily accurately say in a few minutes on the radio. But it is going to cause a little yeah, friction in the relationship. It needn't necessarily yeah. be a big deal. Let's put it that way. Okay. So Here, here's the deal, Miranda. Uh, he pleasures you, and you enjoy it. Now, couldn't you return the favor? I've, I've, I've thought about it quite a few times, but for some reason it's always held me back. Right, but sometimes you just have to hold your nose and jump in the lake. Yeah. 
I know. Well, you know, maybe maybe it's suffocating too. It's what? Sometimes it's not it's not fun when the man's penis is too wide or too long. I only wish I could suffocate somebody one day. That's my dream. Um, perhaps uh, Bernadette Peters or someone like that. Someone has a tremendously small mouth. Yeah. Miranda. Into dangerous territory. Can you breathe through your nose okay? Who, me? Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. No trauma in the childhood? As far as I know, no. Okay. Well, then just take it slow and you'll, you'll get over it. And just one... start from the tip. And uh, you know, it just have to get over it. She does. It's interesting that's your perspective. It's just, okay. Well, okay. She's you're going to have to get used to it. No, yeah. you don't have to get used to it. If it's something you don't like, then give him hand jobs. Okay. Yeah, but <laughs> yes. He's got, guy doesn't want a hand job. Adam, Adam, you don't have to cry about this. I mean, <laughs> All right, I'm breaking just, into tears. Why don't you talk in dirty a... in his ear and gives him a hand job with motion? But he can do that himself. He cannot. Here's that's Please. all. It's so different when someone else does. Really? Yes. You think you can do that good? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Well. Because I don't think I would enjoy that. Well, you're not gonna get a chance to find out. Too bad. Oh. I was talking about Drew. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Drew? Okay. Wow, well, you got the gloves in the car, don't you? <laughs> Shira, 16, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hey. Okay, I have this little problem. You see, I got kicked out of school a couple of days ago. For what? Um, behavior problems. I was beating up too many people. Beating up beating too up many to- people. I used to get in fights. You did. I did. One time I beat this girl up so bad I broke my finger. Ugh. And I almost, I almost, this is such a bad story. I almost got suspended, but I called I her suspended. up and I called her up and apologized. And uh, she called the principal and said, it's fine now. Why do you think you were doing that, uh, Kennedy? I, because my brothers got in fights and I thought it was the okay thing to do. But this is when I was like 12 and 13. And then I got beat up by a guy when I was 14 and that ended my fighting. But now you're back in the ring. Well. Shira. Yeah? Why are you kicking so much female hiney? Well, Put it this way, people bug me, and I I grew up, you know, with people saying, "Oh yeah, you're fat, you're ugly, mm. you're stupid," and Do you have an inferiority me. complex. She's just angry. She was abused, and she's angry. Yeah, but but see, now I like this guy, right? And he's kind of been showing that he likes me. But I got kicked out of school, and I want to ask him out before it's too late. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what to tell him. Say, date me, or I'll kick the crap out of you. But, but see, he's got friends who would beat me up if I did that. Mm. All right. Well, l- listen, you you cannot live by your fist past a certain age. Oh, well, I know. I've thought that. All right. Because it's not ladylike. I don't mean to sound sexist. And you, you seriously will get the living crap kicked out of you one day. If you keep beating people up, you're really going to piss someone off who's either got an older sister or worse, an older brother with friends. Or an older gun. And And mm-hmm. they will not care. They they won't care about you and how bad you bleed and how bad you scream and you will get so badly worked. Like that's happened to me. I, a guy I stuck gum in his hair. What and hasn't he happened to you? That's what I want to know. He beat me up so bad. Really? Yeah, and I got suspended for it. Well, you wow. did you did initiate the fight, but most of the guys at our school don't fight back because they're little pussies. But right. yeah, you know what? You're gonna find one that isn't, and he's gonna work you, and you're gonna realize. How strong a man who's angry and aggressive can be, and it's not a fun lesson. Shira, avoid confrontation. Yeah. Shira, uh, queen of the schoolyard. Shira, <laughs> let me, let me. I want to put you through uh, the Adam Carolla uh, thirty-second finishing school. All right. Okay. Now you're you're kind of a tomboy. You're rough and tough. You're kicking butt. But now you're sixteen. You're looking to attract the men, and you're looking to sort of blend into society a little bit. I mean, you want to get a job. You want to get a career. You want to get married. You want to have a family. And you're not going to do all that, you know, chewing gum, spitting in people's faces, and punching everyone's lights out, right? Right. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Act a little more ladylike. Keep the word dainty in mind. Avoid confrontation because it will come back to you. Walk around the apartment with a book on your head. <laughs> you know, work on posture. Work on your grammar. Work on your mannerisms. Wait, you mean and I be submissive and quiet and laugh at every man's jokes. Absolutely. Finally, we agree on something, Kennedy. You mean I can't cuss anymore? No cussing, Darn no it. dipping, no grabbing at your groin and yelling, blow me, at trucks <laughs> that drive by. Oh, I've never done that before. All right. Well, I, I'm sorry I even planted that seed then. Shira, <laughs> please, you want to track boys, boys like girls, and you, you have to kind of act like them eventually, or or, or you're going to end up like with a some, girl. some no-count snowboarder. 
Oh, sorry, Kennedy. <sighs> no, that's okay. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm mm-hmm. sure he's all there. Mm-hmm. And he's probably quite in good shape, all that he's a very snowboarding. Good shape, yep. Tight. That washboard he's a very stomach. Handsome young man. Yes, I'll very bet. Handsome. How old are the guys? Twenty three. Well, he's a little bit young. He's Wait, my age. You're twenty three? Yeah. God, it's like you're in your. It's, yeah, you, I think you, if, I thought she, Kennedy was older. Career wise, there's yeah. two people actually. We Bobcat had, we, and Kennedy, right? We had Bobcat on the show uh, like a couple of weeks ago, and I went to his birthday party on Sunday. Name I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Thirty. <laughs> and anyway, Adam Sandler and I were talking, and Bobcat <laughs> came by. It's, but anyway, what is his birthday? It's his thirty fourth birthday. Bobcat, 34. So you're 23 and Bobcat is 34, and I'm sure that everybody would be off by at least a few years. And I don't mean that that you look older, although he does, but it's just you started so young. I mean, Yeah, I started. I, I was on the air at K-Rock when I was 19. Wow. I was an intern, and then, I mean, K-Rock has a history of doing that. They hire interns to be on the air when they're... When they've got potential, I guess. And you blew right through that place like if a twister. If you know what I'm saying, baby, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Through? Uh-huh. Stop coloring in your calls then. Kathleen. Does he do that every night? Makes he is a doodler. Kathleen, 31, you're on Loveline with the beautiful Kennedy. Ah, good evening, beautiful Kennedy, Adam and Dr. Drew. I have a question regarding a possible allergy to latex condoms. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that I'm allergic to the Ninoxyl 9 uh, spermicide. Mm-hmm. And what's odd to me is I had, um, I was married for a while and uh, my husband had a vasectomy, so I never really had to use condoms. So now that I'm divorced, I uh, started using them, had one boyfriend, used one brand, and had no problems, uh, broke up with him, different guy, same condom, but I started having these irritational problems. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, is it the condoms? Uh, can it potentially What, what is the problem? Just irritation, not, not uh, infection? Um, well, I don't know how you would define infection, but it would almost kind of start to turn into a yeast infection. Right. Like it would definitely upset the balance. Okay, right. And, and sometimes just having sex can do that. Everything turns into a yeast infection. Right. Let Any, me anything you anything that just like take acidophilus and stuff? Mm, anything that changes the environment in there can, can precipitate a yeast infection. Now, now, it may be the irritation from the condom, maybe just the irritation from whatever, you, you know, mechanical thing you're doing there. Is it like bronchitis? Um, it just kind of lives in you and you're susceptible to it, then you'll yeah, get it pretty easy. right, right. Well, I wouldn't have a problem um, if I was on my period and I wouldn't use a condom. I wouldn't have a problem. Why wouldn't you use a condom? Well, 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 well. If Why you're would... on your period, you're not using a condom. Why aren't you using a condom if you're on your period? No, I wouldn't. Why? Well, I can't get pregnant. Yes, you can. On your period? Of course you can. It's more... What do you think your period is about, woman? It is your body exclaiming, I am ready, I may be shedding the lining, but there could still be an egg in there. No, it's 15 no, days is. after your period where you're most susceptible to that getting pregnant. Th- that is basic. Adam is, is statistically true, but you certainly can get pregnant yes, during your you period. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Well, the main and, reason you don't is because no, no one's going to touch you. M- more importantly... You can, can walk through mud, you can F your blood, baby. Kathleen? <laughs> ovulating during your period. Kathleen, right, you can Haas. listen, you can <laughs> get pregnant during your period. You can get pregnant at any time during your cycle. It's so true. That is categorically the case, okay? Uh, all right, that is Kathleen. that is fact. Now, aside from that fact and perhaps more important is that infections and significant infections tend to be more likely to have complications during your period. Oh. That's how you get PID. That's how you get ascending infections. They tend to be more likely during your period. So the use of a condom then is even that much more important. All right. Kennedy. Yes, I you ever and, use... and, and by the way, you can't have a latex allergy. There is such a thing. Yes, so, I, I yeah. believe it. Yeah. <sighs> you ever use like the, an allergy uh, to ragweed. You ever use the dental dam? No. No. You, from, you know what I'm talking no, about? No, no. It's, it's a square piece of latex square that you put over. Now, have you ever... You don't have to answer this. You're not comfortable with this. But Thanks. you've used a condom. Have you not? For for oral pleasure? Well, no. No? Oh, see? I, I, but I, I would... I, mean, I don't, okay, I don't no, hold that you, against but you. But if you... If you... But you should know the guy. But I think... It's She's not about, it's, No, no, no. It's not about getting AIDS because I wouldn't smile. Oh, you wouldn't? No. All right, get out. No, because get I out. have... No, because, like, the acid content in my stomach, I do not think the two would mix. But um, I think it's about getting herpes. Yeah, right. Drew? You can get anything. I mean, I mean, you can get anything through oral sex that you can get through genital, genital contact. But you're saying that you would wear a condom because you're worried about herpes? Yeah. You'd have him wear a condom. And hepatitis. Hepatitis. Oh, my gosh. I'm so scared to pick up any kind of napkins or Kleenex that are sitting anywhere mm-hmm. because I'm scared I'm going to get hepatitis. That is my biggest fear. That mm-hmm. and I'm going to hit an old person in the dark. 
Let me tell you something, too, Kennedy. If you're having those fears at 23, you are going to be a <laughs> basket case in your 50s. You're going to be a mess. You're going to be like Howard Hughes. You're going to be wearing Kleenex boxes on your oh, feet. Your nails are going to be out to here. That. Absolutely. Dustin, Leslie, 21, you're on Love Line with Kennedy. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Drew, Adam, Kennedy, everybody. Hi, Dustin, Leslie. Hi. I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Um, I used to live in an apartment. Now. We live in Chicago now, just outside of Chicago. I used to live in an apartment with a bunch of uh, teenagers and older people that smoked pot incessantly. Mm -hmm. And they claimed that uh, one of the guys was going for a job application. They were going to give him a drug test. And uh, they all claimed that if he drank this special kind of tea. Golden Seal tea? Gold Seal. Yeah that's, yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, that he would test uh, negative for not, ne not necessarily, no. They don't have drug testing in MTV, do they? <laughs> no. They'd have to do some serious house cleaning if I mean, they did, I'm I mean, sure. People no, try all actually... kinds of things to, to sort of cover that up, but marijuana is a very difficult thing to clear from your urine. It takes a long time. Really? Yeah. Oh, remember in the program, that guy day. that, that injected sec. new urine into his bladder? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That's yeah. pretty sick. I've seen, I've seen some wild stuff. What have you seen, Drew? Or like little devices where it's like a hose underneath the I penis? Saw, I saw a guy with an IV tubing under his skin. Under his skin? Yeah. Somebody else's urine. Oh, yeah. wow. Wait a minute yeah, now, yeah. Drew. Yeah. Well, how'd he do that? Drew, well, well, you said you saw I, it. I mean, I, it's what I, I actually, the nurses found it and said that's what they found. So, All right, so he takes... He, he must have found a little bit under the skin. Oh. So. For, for, wait, because... People do wild things. And the, other, the, the, the classic thing is they put little flakes of bleach on their fingernails and flick them into the urine, and that tends to screw with the, the test. That's the no. beauty about radio. Yeah. There's no drug testing. As a matter of fact, I think you're you're penalized if they don't find traces of THC in your urine, aren't you, Drew? No. <laughs> Hi, this is John Tesh, and you are listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. What a pro that John is. Oh, he's gone though. Yeah, tonight played, was it last night. Was it? Oh, it was? He played Black Sabbath on uh, Conan O'Brien. Oh, you mean he did like a Black Sabbath? Sabbath riff on his no, he plays piano? Some Black Sabbath with Dweezil and Amit Zappa. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, all all uh, friends of Love Line, Dweezil and Amit were in a couple of weeks ago, and um, Hesh was in like what two months ago? Yeah, about that. Real decent guy. Real good guy. Yeah. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. I'm Adam Kroll. He's Doctor Drew. She is Kennedy. She's here from Love Line. She has the life of no, Riley. I'm here from MTV. I mean. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting punchy. Here from MTV on Love Line. Yes. And she's uh, out here doing the MTV uh, Beach House wiggle. And that's got to be cool. It's a nice wiggle if you can get it. <laughs> they have a big house. And they sort of put you up nearby as everyone put up. Does anyone stay at the actual house? No. It's really small. It's a shame. Oh, really? Bob Garn. But they have a big pool and, and all kinds of uh, Yeah, they built stuff. a pool and a deck, and they have nice young kids come out, and some of the ladies have silicone implants, and mm. they weigh 40 pounds. I love that grind show. Uh -huh. You know why? Because I love the combat boots with the bikini. Why? It's just, so, it's a turn on. It's like, I don't know, it's like in Sesame Street, you know, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> and... For some reason, you never see a woman wearing combat boots in a bikini, unless, of course, you get, you have MTV and you like to masturbate to the grind. You are a compulsive masturbator, aren't you? Absolutely. That's all you talk about. Do you masturbate as much as you talk about masturbating? I've only talked about masturbating like three times a no, night. In your life, you talk about masturbating so much. I'm pretty. I'm like I'm, I'm consistent. I wouldn't call Every myself day? compulsive. Yeah. Every single day, even Look, if you have a girlfriend. Listen, don't. Don't get insulting by saying every single day after I just agree to every day, okay? Because <laughs> that's I mean, that's you insulting. Miss, like, a couple of days. No, no. Uh, I Kenny, will. The next question is how many times a day? Oh, All right. How many times a day? Uh, please hold once? on a second. Let me answer once the first in the question. Once the morning. I once will bed. miss a day on occasion. Because you have a girlfriend or something? No, just because you know something you know happens. He's, he's like sick. Kind of car accident or something like that. But I will make up for it. Your hands the were next made day, <laughs> yeah, I was like I had like gotten a grease fire or something. <laughs> I was making bacon and things went awry, so I'll make up for it. So I'd say average about once a day, and I admit it. And everyone listening, every guy I know is good for at least once a day too. 
Worse except except for Drew, but he's lying. Yes. You, let me tell you what your snowboarding uh, buddy's doing up there on Mount Wacky right now. He is going to town. I guarantee it. Oh, Absolutely. So how, how often do you get to see your boyfriend? A lot. Yeah, but when's the last time you saw him? A week ago. A week? Okay, he's masturbated seven times. <laughs> I guarantee you he has not. I will guarantee that he squeezed one off in the shower while you were there. That's how committed he is. Absolutely. I would tell you a story right now, but since the show is broadcast in Portland, I would be scared my mom is listening. So I really have to hold back. But that's something to do with the show and masturbation. Okay. You want to write it down? <laughs> no, because you'll say it. All right. I won't. I won't. All right. Well, I'll respect it. I mean, why don't you just say friend of yours or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 just give us a general okay. idea. Now that now that this is in Portland, I really have to watch myself. We're not in Portland, are we, Drew? <laughs> no. Did you hear me? Shook his head. <laughs> We're not even in Los Angeles. You know where we broadcast no. to? The next room. <laughs> Dooley's the only guy who hears the show. Oh goodness. All right, all right. Well, don't talk about that. You sure you don't want to talk about? I don't it? Want to all right. But, I mean, I do, but I don't. All right, but you know he does it at least once a day, and especially when you're not around. I don't care around. if he does it once a day. Okay. I really do when I was around. You, you didn't care if he did it while you were no. around? You didn't take that offense to that? No. Yeah, you don't look at it as like he, he's replacing you, do you? No. No. And besides, you're not, you know, I mean, he's got to. Exactly. Right. Okay, you're very sympathetic. Rick, 17, you're on Love Line with uh, the elusive Kennedy. I back you up 100%, buddy, every day. Thank goodness. Hey, no problem. Hey, I had a question about herbal ecstasy, Drew. Right. Yeah. Um, It'll kill you. It's got a in it. Big thing down here in Tucson right now. Mm. Um, so are heart the, attacks. Yeah, I know. Big thing right now. We take the kind without a and everything, and uh, I tried it the other day, and it really messed me up pretty good. W what does it have in it? The, it's the... The, the ingredients? Yeah. I mean, ephedra is the thing that we've been concerned about. That right, stuff got, like, messes uh, you up so bad. Vitamin C and uh, guana and all sort of stuff. Mm. Mediguana. Guana na. Isn't right. guana like crap? Pat guana, yeah. Bat crap? Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Ace Venture, too. Licorice root, uh, Yokohama, some other uh, Indian uh, Chinese. There are figure skaters in That's there? a Japanese city, Yokohama, oh, or, and it's whatever, also a tire right, company. Um, anyways, uh, I saw a guy with Yokohama tires. You, or does it yes, like, uh, really mess you up or what? I'd have to know what was in it. I, I mean, the thing we concern ourselves with mostly with that product is the ephedrine. The Japanese can really okay. make And uh, there are certain herbs uh, that are associated with liver problems, but I'm not so sure those are included in these products. So I don't know. I'd have to know more about what's in there. But here's what I'm concerned about, Rick. What? Everybody's attempt to alter themselves. Yeah. It's kind of... It's it's that's my concern. I'm surprised you said that. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm speaking for Drew here when I yeah, say that his are. his concern is that people alter themselves, and that's kind of the stupid message of all this stuff because it's basically saying, listen, alter yourself, but don't worry, it's not addicting or it's safe. There is no free lunch in the, in nature. There isn't. If mm -hmm. you if you're going to alter your brain chemistry, you are going to have a price. And you know where it's going? It's going down the freight elevator. El 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 elevator. You some, know where it's going? In some way, it will. Right to the penis. Oh, God. Whenever you That's not true. I mean, whenever you other places that are... Yeah, but whenever you get yourself screwed up with drugs, the penis well, suffers. People break out in their skin and... Yeah, but the only thing guys care about... The no, wiener? That's, uh, that's the only thing that... Oh, that, absolutely. That, uh, short of that, they don't care about anything else. Sally, 22, you're on Love Line with Kennedy. It's the only way to get guys to stop experimenting with stuff. Really? But uh, it's true that doesn't doesn't marijuana shrink your testicles? It can Hello. Drop at least at least increase your estrogen levels and may may cause. But not for women. I'm here, Sally. No. Hi, how you doing? Hey. Hi. <laughs> What's up? Hey. Hello. I can't believe I got through. Right on. All right, get over it. What's your question? All right. Okay, I have a few things to say. First of all, I want to say that Kennedy. Yes. I actually can't stand you, but you interview all the cool people, so I've developed this love hate thing for you. Mm. So I respect you, and you rip, even though I kind of can't stand you. But anyway, we'll get over that. You kind of can't stand me, but you've gotten to know me. So <laughs> yeah. it's okay now. You Now you can accept me. Well, you interview all the cool people, and you hang out with all the cool people that you want to watch, so... Yeah, but Kennedy is fast becoming one of the cool people. As a matter of fact, you ought to just interview yourself for a half hour on the next MTV segment, That'd Kennedy. That'd be boring. So how many times have you washed your hands today? <laughs> She's oh, about 73. Obsessive compulsive. <laughs> Kennedy is, uh, I, 
Anyway, okay. Well, I well, just choked on a car. <laughs> 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 Wait, Sal, let me say this about Kenny. I'm being honest here, Kenny. I don't take any offenses. But Kenny, Kenny can, she can be a little abrasive or can rub you the wrong way or come across this way or that way. But you have to respect her work. She's real good. And when you get to know her, she's pretty nice, too. Exactly. All right. All right. So. Okay, cool. But the thing is, like, I'm not a mean person. Anyway, whatever. What I was calling to say was that, okay, that chick that just called about the problem with the oral sex, she doesn't like to give it, da-da-da-da-da-da. Uh-huh. Sounds like you got big old mouth. You don't have any problem with that, do you, sunshine? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, don't get abusive to the callers just because they're not kissing your ass. (laughs) Exactly. Go ahead, Sally. Anyway, well, exactly. So that girl doesn't like to give it, so she gets flack for not giving it. What if you like to give it? Mm -hmm. You've been told you're good at it. Now, I'm just curious because I've been told this by friends, guys, everything, that is it true that even though the guy, that's what they totally want more than anything, that's what they totally enjoy more than anything, but actually maybe you shouldn't be so generous with it. You shouldn't give it away so easily. What, oral sex? Yeah. Well, not. you shouldn't give it away like fruit baskets. I'll tell you, we had a cat, Sally, when I was a kid. Oh, God. Named uh, Norman. I cried Uh, when I had to put Norman down, but here's the story. We fed Norman dry food all during the week because it was too big a hassle with the canned food and the can opener and whatnot and the mess and everything. And what we did is we would go for the wet food maybe once a week or on Christmas or on Norman's birthday. Yeah, Doing yeah, special yeah, occasions. Yeah. And, the, oh. and, and, and Norman really went nuts for this wet food because he only got it once a week or so, and he really would just go nuts. It was an incredible treat for young Norman. Yeah. Well, what if Norman was one night stand? Should you go ahead and give him the wet food? Or? Yeah, go ahead and break out the can opener if you're just going to blow the cat have, once. You can have 365 one night stands a year, and unless you're getting paid for it. Right. It's not that lucrative for you. <laughs> Emotionally, especially. But, Sally, you enjoy it. Right. And there's no doubt that Norman enjoys it. Right. And if it's just going to be a short thing or the guy's in for the weekend or what have you, then go ahead. Don't in, don't don't inhibit yourself. But maybe if you're in a real, you know, if you're married and you're living with the person, you may want to mix it up a little, a little dry food. Oh, right, 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 right. Once right. in a while, just to keep the guy on. But I think she's saying that she's kind of a mouth hole, that she gives a lot of BJs. Right. And I'm, and I don't, but, and please don't mishear me, Sally. I'm not trying to, uh, slow down that big, uh, big mouth of yours in any, any way. That big mouth, this juggernaut, your, that big <laughs> suck you? fest, okay, you. Whatever. Please. G- continue. Go forth and, uh, suck. Okay, so. But you know what? I, you can, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, that's a form of sex, and, um, it can make a woman feel cheap or used or spent. Yeah, but the only time she's going to feel cheap is if she feels like she was she tricked into it. She feels something because she's calling and she has a problem with it. She enjoys it and she just worries that she is going to be pigeonholed or taken Maybe for granted. Maybe she enjoys it at the time, but afterwards she feels like a slut. All right. Now, you know what you're doing? What am I doing, Adam? You're projecting. I am not projecting. Yes, you're projecting, projecting your own feelings about the male phallus. I don't have to project. <laughs> I, I can hear it in Sally's voice. No, Sally maybe, had no problem. Maybe prom- it's more that she doesn't really understand right, me, why she doesn't feel fulfilled I, by it. I hate to do this. Sally. I feel like a slut, but some people like to say that I should feel like a slut now, and I don't. You enjoy doing this, do you not? Yes. It brings you pleasure. Sure. And you only... Yeah. You but only... how do you feel afterward? I feel like, like right the on, next I day. your world. You're stoked. What do you, what do you feel like the next day? Uh, I could care less. All right. You enjoy Unless this. Unless it's someone that I have to see, and they told me, well, you shouldn't do that. So, I mean, thanks a lot. I enjoyed it. That was rad. But, you know, you really shouldn't do that so easily. Sally, so you're calling because you're worried about the way other people were perce- will perceive you, not the way you feel. I'm not worried about anything. I How old are you? You guys have to say 22. 22. Hmm. All right. So it's not that, Kennedy, as much as you maybe, try to force you know feed her that. Yeah, but you know Adam. what I think you're getting at, Kennedy, is that for really virtually all healthy women, uh, if you're not getting any kind of an emotional connection from that sort of physical act, uh-huh. it is destined to make you feel bad. Well, and obviously and, you're not getting that if you, and, you have to do that right, to so many and, men. And in, uh, unfulfilled, because really what a woman looks for in those sorts of interactions is the emotional connection, and yeah. there's no way you're going to get it in this kind of behavior. Yeah. All right. yeah. so you, it's not it's not getting off for a woman like it is for a man because right. with men it's like sex is about getting off. All right, you guys have turned a purely visceral, physical 
uh, event into another big psychological mumbo jumbo thing, and you're screwing Just it up for me. Because you can't explore uh, the feminine. You're out of my masturbatory bubble for that kind of talk, <laughs> sweet cheeks. <laughs> Love line, phone number 1 800 L O V E 191, fax number 310 854 4455. Next week, Fred Schneider from the B 52s, also Adam West. I'm gonna be on Love Line talking about blowjobs. <laughs> the Deftones, also next week. I'm Adam Carolla, he is Dr. Drew, and the voice of Fred Schneider was portrayed by none other than Kennedy. You and know, we were her right, you were wrong, last call. From MTV. Now, we argued for the uh, the entire four-minute commercial break uh, while we ate popcorn about uh, whether women, uh, whether it was healthy or average or all right for them to uh, want to give a guy oral pleasure and actually uh, a, bunch guy, guys. a okay. bunch of different guys. a bunch of different guys. That was the thing. Right. All right, Kennedy, again, projecting. It uh, wasn't. Obviously, okay, yeah, it's all about projection all right, let me, just because all right, I can Let me ask you something. Let me ask you. Do you enjoy the uh, oral stuff? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Do you enjoy a man's uh, unit once in a while? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I thought that was part of the whole oral thing. Oh, uh, it is for me. Do you know? Do you? Because you, you're working way back into the masturbatory but I bubble. I will not touch the the back door. <laughs> no. It's just not for that. Not into that. Exit only. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really a big fan of that either. It's a little. Uh, find a little bit drill. But I enjoy fondling and suckling the winners. Yes, you do. Yeah. You okay, do. good. Because it sounded like you had a little um, bone to no, pick. No, 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 no. I was just saying, a girl like that who gives many guys oral pleasure isn't getting anything back. And she just likes the, validation, the temporary attention. validation. The attention. Okay. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. Yeah. But, she's not right. really, but, but a woman who's not... But at least she likes me now, and that's all that matters. But hypothetically, if she hooked herself up with some hot young snowboarding type, she could uh, blow okay. until uh, until she turned blue and in the face. And she would probably feel better because she would probably get love in return and not just oral reciprocation. Right. Or at least some, like, uh, free sweatshirts and some stickers. <laughs> Danielle, 16, you're on <laughs> Love Line with Kennedy. Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what you want. You're getting free apparel, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if a person who was sexually assaulted could still have a normal sex life later on in life. What do you mean by sexual assault? Like rape. Rape at what age? Um, fourteen. Yeah, I mean, people get over raped. I mean, the, it, it is going to affect your relationship. Certainly, it's going to affect how you feel about men. It can affect your how you feel about your sexuality. But, but I mean, when would you ever recover? I mean, when could you ever feel comfortable and well, have? Like, why don't you tell us what's going on with you? I don't know. I'm just. I don't. It's just hard for me to ever feel real close to a man. What Maybe. happened? How old are you? How old am I? Mm -hmm. She's 16. She was raped when she was 14. And have you have you gotten any counseling? Yes, I've gone to counseling and things like that. It just doesn't seem like my body itself is is recovering. I mean, I when I'm around older men, I get frightened if they get too close, you uh, know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they sense that in me. And I I can't control it. They're not doing anything, but mm -hmm. it's just the whole fact that they're near me. Well, this is something that's going to take a little while. I mean, a few trips to the therapist is not going to cure this. This is a, you know, I mean, a pretty traumatic event, and it happened at a sort of pivotal time in your, your life and in your sort of sexual development, and it's going to take a little while. But certainly, if you have the attitude of, you know, I want to, I want to get better and I want to work on it, then it's going to happen. It's just, it's, uh, ultimately, it may even be better because you may choose your partners a little more carefully or you may hook yourself up with people that you've investigated a little more and that you trust. And, and I, I don't know, Drew, go ahead. I was very promiscuous for a while. You were? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm more concerned with what you were like before the rape. Before, I mean, I was total sex, no Why? sex before marriage. And Why? Why? Yeah. Because that was my morals. That's how I believed. That's no, no, I no. What, what was going on? What was going on with you that that, that you, you needed to act out like that? I and, I don't know. And my that's, whole, and that's really, it, was, it was my brother. Well, what happened to your brother? He's in prison. What, what did he do? He did it. Yeah. Oh, he raped you. Oh, yeah. see, this is this is way more than just sexual assault. This yeah. is this is all the the issues of 
first of all, what you were like before this event and what kind of issues you had then, and the fact that this was a, a violent crime and that it was your brother. I mean, these, these yeah, are huge, rape huge. Rape is not a sexual crime. Rape is a crime of violence. Right. This is huge issues. These are giant. You know, this is, of course, this is going to have rather profound effects on you. And I, I would say you should stay in with the therapy for a long period of time to try to, to sort this out. But you can definitely sort it out. You can sort it, but it, it, again, depending on you, you don't like it when I'm honest. But no, I mean you can't just deny it. That's not sorting it but, out. But it's by really just issue. saying it doesn't. It's, what, it's, wait a minute. When did I say anymore. deny it? Don't look at me no, that it's way. Like, well, no, the because issue, like the issue just, is more what what Danielle is like psychologically before the rape and what her family was like and this sort of thing, and and those those pre-event condition that she was in that sort of set her up. Right. Her brother's getting raped in prison. That's the damn thing. But what I'm my message to Danielle is she's 16. She understands she had a problem, possibly has mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. and has begun some work on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I mean, let's face it. Everything we did relationship-wise before the age of 20 or 23 is sort of uh, just ancient history now, especially. But in, I think everything molds your your childhood and mm -hmm. right. You know, right. But I'm just saying, there's there's plenty of time for her to do her therapy and to ease her way back into a trusting relationship and go on and have a normal life if she does the work that is. Um, it's quite that, a long road. Though. A long That's road, so right? Much work. Right, a lot of work. All right, but you know what? She can do it. I suggest that people do a little work anyway. Yeah, right, right, right. All right. Rob, 17, you're on Love Line with the um, troublesome Kennedy. Hi, Adam. Uh, first Hi, I was Drew. in the bubble, now I'm troublesome. Now oh, you're like on the, on, the, on the bubble of the bubble. You're on the edge of the bubble. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Adam, Dr. Drew, you guys have a great show. You guys keep me up way too late at night. Um, but my question is for Kennedy. Um, I, I think you're the funniest person on MTV out of them all. Uh, you really bring light to it compared to shows that I don't really care for, like The Grind. But um, <laughs> uh, how did you get into it? I mean, I heard you mention something about KRXQ, but I would just die to get into your field someday. Um, it, it actually was through radio. I was interning at a radio station, and uh, you know, fortunately, it happened to be a. Station. She used to hang out at Loveline in the old days. I yeah, yeah. because uh, my uh, well, not until I was on the air, but my shift was on right after Loveline. Oh, yeah? On, uh, yeah, every night, five nights a week. Rob. Yeah. 11 to 1. Uh, is there a radio station somewhere near you? Um, yeah, there's a couple in the Sacramento area. All right, go down there. Go down there? Radio, well, I wasn't in radio uh, like a year and a half ago. Radio is a vast oasis of morons, basically. <laughs> it can be so much fun. <laughs> radio can be radio can be amazing. It can be so intimate and. Uh... Oh yeah, wait, wait. Let me let me just uh, correct something that engineer Mike piped in, which was only on the air. Yes, the behind the scenes people, the mechanical people are fine. The engineers, the tech guys, those guys, those guys. How about the administrative people? <laughs> Drew loves to do this. No, administrators are really just burnt out jocks who started but off as van drivers. I had, I had some great administrators working uh -huh. in my day. With the likes of Trip Reeve, Andy Schoen, and oh, Kevin Weatherly. Oh, please. I've, all Are right, we having I'm, an earthquake? No, that's that's, that's true as foot. He gets oh. going when I start talking about uh, the management. But listen, mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't take much brains to get into radio. Believe me, I'm in radio. Uh -huh. I, I was cleaning carpets, okay? Uh -huh. Go down to the radio station, throw yourself on the mercy of them. Anybody with uh, just a uh, inkling of talent, like Kennedy here, uh -huh. will... And of course, there's more in that with Kennedy. I don't even have an inkling. But we'll go. My brother's on the radio. You'll now. breeze right through the station, and before you know, it, you'll par parlay into something huge. Like unless uh, the program director, like the Braun in that station, you well, little tramp. <laughs> that well, you should hear what that program director had to say. Mm -hmm. so All right, say about you. No, but you seriously, can't. Kennedy. Kennedy. But so my brother quit that station, working in another station. Okay, are, are you are you done this? I know this is very cathartic for you, but we're not all but interested in your, is, the is plight of your younger thing, brother. Unless you know, some egotistical moron with no talent who was a part-timer in Arizona. All right, all right, all right. All right. Unless a guy like that stands in your way. Please, we're trying to stay on the air over there. Rob, yep. go down to a local station, and, and you know if it comes to it and you got to blow your way to the top like Kennedy, that's fine. But hopefully I your talent... I was concubine. There was no oral pleasure involved. <laughs> hopefully your talent will... Uh, We'll take you far. All, All right. right. All right. God bless you. All right. Real fast. Huh? Yeah. 
Lori, 28, drawing love line. <laughs> responding conversations responding to yourself, internal huh? stimuli. <laughs> Sybil, the host. L- Lori. Hello. Hey. Hi, how you doing? Good. Um... Well, I enjoyed listening to you guys, and uh, I finally got some nerve up to call you. Um, glad I got through. I'm engaged, and um, I found out uh, a few months ago, uh, quite accidentally, some uh, porno magazines in my, my uh, boyfriend's closet. All right, baby. <laughs> yeah, you know, I really don't have a problem with that, but when I bring it up to him, he's he's pretty embarrassed and pretty bent out of shape about it and says that he doesn't want to talk about it and it's a guy thing and I understand it's a guy thing, but I just kind of want to understand why it's such a guy thing. What Men kind of man? are visually stimulated, la, 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 la. Yeah, so they I need pictures of right? boobies and shaved vaginas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something I can't offer. <laughs> yes. Women are, they're more, uh, they, they work off the other senses. Yeah, right? you know, yeah. I, I understand we're more cerebral The brain. That. The yeah, brain. Exactly. Yes, like when Kennedy masturbates, she sniffs a little vial called <laughs> Essence of Schlong. <laughs> Lori. Yeah. What, what kind I of magazine? Stephen Hawking. Well, um, it, it wasn't anything tasteful. Like Wait a minute, the physicist? Like, yeah. What? <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Wheel, that's... She's masturbating a wheel bound wheelchair wheelchair bound a f- physicist who barely can he's got to have a, a trough a spit trough next to him in order to but he's a brilliant guy a very yeah brilliant. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't anything like you know artsy like like playboy it was it was more of like the uh, you know uh, big brown jugs yeah some it was something <laughs> it was something pretty, pretty okay bad. all right and that's his thing and he's a little defensive about it and, and let me tell you this guys spend their entire uh, adolescence and, and teenage years. Translation, wor- Adam spent his entire adolescence I'm still in, in no, no, I'm still living those out. Worrying about mom coming into the room and finding the, the frisky or the hustler stash between the box spring and the mattress. Then they get older, they move out of the house. For a couple of years, they have it good with a male roommate, but they have to hide it for different reasons because a guy will swipe it and bring it to his bathroom. Get it all soggy. Get, right, get the pages stuck together. But then later, they get married or they get engaged. They live with a woman, and again, it's back to hiding. When you find that, the man regresses back to the 12 or 13-year-old, and all of a sudden, it's like your mother. And he gets into denial thing. He immediately goes into this 12 year old regression and it's immediate denial. Uh, that was the guy who lived here before left that. I don't want to talk about it. That's his copy of Big Brown Jugs. Yes. The elderly gent, the wheelchair bound (laughs) physicist who lived here before, before me left the issue of Big Brown Jugs here. So please don't be confrontational about it, Laurie. It doesn't sound like she's being confrontational. I wasn't trying trying to be confrontational about it at all. All right, I'm sorry. I know I I know I got a little defensive there. It sounds like you're being fine. If he doesn't want to talk about it, then don't talk about it. Why don't you buy him a copy of something? You know, I you know, I've actually thought about doing that, about buying him a subscription and Buy him Jenny McCarthy's new Playboy video. And listen, that doesn't work. Or the new copy of Playboy, which has Jenny on the cover, which the pictures are old. Jenny hasn't taken any new nude photographs for Playboy. They're all old pictures. Saw today looks great. She does not look old. And let me say no, this. She's not old. All right, she's but let me say this. Man needs to go out and get his own porno. This 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 is a slap in the not face. Not every man, but yes. some men. Let me need tell you, porno. you are the lion. You are the king of the pride. You do not want some uh, some uh, carcass dragged over to you. You want to chase it and pounce on it. And that's what a man must do when he goes forth and seeks <laughs> porno. When we talk to you again, it will be from the beautiful Westwood One Studios in Arlington. I want to thank, with uh, Fred Schneider, I want to thank the lovely Lisa for doing the phones, the beautiful Sherry for doing the phones, the lovely Anne for producing the show, the One Nut Wonder engineer Mike for doing the show, and Kennedy, who said she was going to come in and stay for 10 minutes and stayed for two hours, and we loved every... I can't believe the time is We have loved every second of it. So, uh, until next week, mahalo. Magic wand makes my penis grow. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.